If you've been wanting to invest in real estate, but you're not really sure which path to take, then you definitely clicked on the right video. Starting the journey of real estate investing can be an intimidating task for many people. And there's a plethora of options, risk strategies, and things to learn that any one person may not even know where to start. And one of the first things that should be considered is whether your investments are going to be active investments or passive investments. So here are the differences between the two real estate investing strategies, as well as the advantages and disadvantages of each of them. The first type is active real estate. So active real estate investing is a form of investing that's much more hands-on involved, hence the name active. This means that the investors are fully involved in the real estate investment and the sole role of an active investor typically involves a large amount of analysis, research, and expertise in order to be successful. Active real estate investors are completely responsible for their portfolios. This means that they are the ones who consider the risk and reward for each one of their investments. Thus, the general goal of an active real estate investor is to constantly be right about the times to buy and sell and make a profit out of it. Here's some examples of active real estate investing. Most of the work involved with active real estate investing has to do with buying, selling, or renting properties. And a very common real estate investment is known as a fix and flip. This is when an investor buys a property, then later fixes it up and sells it for a profit. These investments can be very risky and involve a lot of time and money to do so. Another form of active investing is renting out a property. This consists of purchasing a property and turning it into a rental by renting it out to someone else. Doing this can create a great source of passive income and can even cover the property's mortgage until it's fully paid off. Once the rental properties are paid off, the investor is free to either sell them or move into them themselves. And the second type is passive real estate investing. This is similar to active, except much less involvement and effort. These investments are typically less expensive than the active ones, but also have less returns. Passive investing is commonly used for long-term, like saving for retirement or for a college fund. And for this reason, passive real estate investments are more like buy and hold investments. This means that you invest and you keep that investment for many years until you want it back. And here's some examples. Most passive investments consist of real estate funds, crowdfunding opportunities, or a real estate investment trust. All of these require the investor to invest at least a small amount of money and wait some time before getting a return. And by investing in these methods, you're not building any sort of real estate portfolio. Instead, you're basically investing in someone else's portfolio, hoping that they make a profit and then you do too. So now you know that both kinds of investing are pretty different, but it's always good to know exactly what those differences are. And the most important areas where they differ are the amount of work needed, the experience required, how much income is earned, and if the assets are liquid. Let's dive into each one of those. First off, we're gonna compare the amount of work needed for each. Active investing requires an immense amount of work and can typically be considered a full-time job, especially for those investing in residential or commercial real estate. There are so many different factors and things to do that investors won't have time for anything else. On the other hand, passive investors do not require as much work. Participating in a real estate fund or crowdfunding opportunity could be easy as going on your phone and putting in some money. Obviously, passive investors should do some research and invest their money where they believe they'll make a profit. However, the research is minimal and the risk is also minimal as they can usually take the money out whenever they want. When investors can get their investment back easily or whenever they want, the investment is known as a liquid investment. Liquidity is extremely important when investing and we'll discuss that later. Another very important factor to consider when comparing the two investing styles is the amount of experience that is required. Since passive investment is as easy as going online and searching for potential funds, it doesn't require that much experience. A few days of research or even hours can bring you to some long-term profitable investments. On the other hand, active investments require much more time, effort, and more importantly, expertise. Active investors must be well-versed in the timing of the markets to know when to buy and when to sell. They must be able to tell which properties have potential for profit and which ones don't. And without these skills, investors risk losing a lot of time and money on their investments. And for some people, the deciding factor between these two investment strategies is income. When determining income, it's vital that you also consider the risk involved as well as the time. For example, a passive investor may make a fraction of what an active investor makes in a year, but they don't have as much risk. Generally speaking, this is the case when it comes to comparing both incomes. Active real estate investors acquire their own income producing real estate and keep all the profits. This can net them anywhere from a few thousand to a few million dollars a year. And then on the other hand, passive investors make that amount simply by waiting long enough and not risking their greatest assets their money. And as mentioned before, liquidity is the ability of an asset to be liquidated or sold back to the market. Most real estate investments like residential or commercial properties are known as illiquid assets. This is because selling properties is not necessarily easy and can take months. In contrast, most passive investments are easy to convert to liquidate because they are still in the form of cash. For most investments, an investor can take out this money whenever they want to. The only downside to this is that certain investments may charge a fee for taking out investments early. Now for the pros and cons of active real 
real estate investing. First, the pros. Flexibility. One advantage of being an active real estate investor is that you can be more flexible with your investments. Since an active investor is the sole manager of the investments, they can buy and sell at their own command instead of a specific index. This can come as a great advantage, especially for those who have a higher expertise in the area. More control. Just as discussed in the previous point, active investors have way more control over their investments than passive investors do. Since passive investors are investing in the ideas of other people, they miss out on opportunities that are even more profitable. However, this added control also means added risk if the investor is not very knowledgeable. Passive investors only risk losing a portion of their assets when they invest, but active investors can risk losing a ton more since they're solely responsible for their investments. Tax benefits. Active real estate investors can also take advantage of some pretty cool benefits. One of the most beneficial tax benefits is the ability to deduct expenses. These expenses must be tied to a real estate investment and can include property taxes, maintenance, interest, property management fees, office space, and anything else that counts as a business expense. Now here are the cons for active investing. Higher risk. One of the most obvious risks of investing actively is that the investor will face a higher risk. As we've kind of talked before, there is higher risk when being an active investor. Since they're investing their own money, they're risking losing all of it. And unfortunately, it's not easy to get back, depending how severe that investment was. But as everyone knows, with high risk comes high reward. It's very nice when the analysis is correct, but when it's not correct, it can be really bad. More expenses. Another disadvantage of active investing is that it's more expensive than passive investing. These expenses come in the form of transaction fees, paying analysts for advice on investments, and other fees. Although they may not seem like much at first glance, these expenses can build up over years and completely kill your returns. That's why it's essential to stay on top of expenses and make sure they do not get out of control. So now that we've discussed all the pros and cons of active investing, let's go over the same for the passive real estate investing. First, the pros. One of the best advantages of passive investing is that it's really cheap to start. Since the only fees that a passive investor will pay are a couple of transaction fees when they want to invest more money, the expenses do not pile up as much. Also, the minimum investments for many funds are usually not too high. This means that investors can get started with only a few hundred dollars in their bank account. Another advantage of going with passive investments is that there are fewer tax Taxes. This is because there is less income. With the buy and hold strategy, the capital gains every year is very low. That means that the taxable income for these investments won't be as much compared to that of an active investor. And here are some cons. It's very limited. One of the disadvantages of passive investing is that investors are very limited on what they can invest in. For example, when investing in an index fund, the investor does not choose which assets are being invested in. They're only choosing the collection of predetermined investments that they hope will yield them a profit. The small returns. Passive investors also suffer from smaller returns compared to active investors. Obviously, this is because there's much less risk and scale involved in passive investing. However, these small returns can add up over the years. Countless investors put a small amount of money every month into their investments and grow to large sums of money by the rate they retire. So which one is right for you? That question can be answered by asking yourself these set of questions. How much risk are you willing to take? What is the level of control that you want? How much expertise and skill do you have? And how much time can you dedicate to these investments? Just make sure to consider all the factors in life before making any decisions. If this video helped you out, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more real estate content. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!